guy back there, he knows. Hello, folks. <laughs> it's time for us to be on the air, and we are. And we're very sorry that you missed half of uh, the best part of the show. I've said this many times. Just already occurred right before we came on the air. I'm John so Gray, by the way. Hi, John Gray. Hi, I'm, Peggy. I'm Peggy Burton. Nice to meet you. And I'm Jim Fuller. Good to see you guys. We've been gone a long time. Tell well, us, tell we're us, gone a week. Tell us again about Peggy's, about the fat hair thing. I think that, that <laughs> you Peggy, to, <coughs> Peggy she she that. looked at herself in the camera and she said, I've got fat hair. And I thought, what a great product. <laughs> Peggy yeah. Burton's hair so fat. Is your hair thin? Does it blow in the wind? Yeah. Don't stand for that. Get hair so fat. <laughs> that was great, John. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Let's put a price on it and sell it. Put a it, price yeah. on it and sell it. And it comes, in a, it comes in a 55-gallon <laughs> drum with a pump. Yeah. <laughs> you, also, a fire you also mentioned something about greasing it down with chicken fat. I thought yeah. that was a, a good idea. Yeah, what happened to men greasing their hair? When did I, that go out? I think in the 70s because I remember when I was younger, I I used people a, greased. I think it was hair? called I think it was Vaseline or something like well, that. Well, there was know. Vaseline and before Brill Vaseline, cream. Uh, cream. Uh, that was before it, yeah. both of those little guys like you and me when we were little guys used butch wax. Butch wax, I And it was stiff. Well. I mean, you could wallpaper so you with that stuff. Your hair. Yeah. Well, it's sort of like that product they have now. It's called Rough or something. Yeah. It was, a, it was like a paste, big, thick paste. And boy, it'd make your little, you know, you'd get well, a flat could, top. You'd want that front to stand uh, up like a little, mohawk, little prickles. Up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little prickles. And every little boy about eight, nine years old had them a little can of butch wax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stick that hair up there. Things have changed. Here I come, baby. Yeah, that's right. That's so right. So during the hippie era, people there was, started there was, their hair. There, just, hair, there was everything, no, was no, right. everything was free. Everything was free. Yeah. You grew yeah, long hair, yeah, had right. dreadlocks, and just spray washed it well, once in we a while. Didn't. John, didn't want, John and I didn't in the heyday because we worked for a company in Atlanta that required us to <laughs> clean up. Hair yeah, they required <laughs> us to clean up. So, you know. Uh, that's just like we had. Uh, this past weekend, we had... My class, 1967, had their 50-year anniversary, and I was the MC. And there was some stuff in there about the dress code. <clears throat> yeah. Young men, young men came with a haircut, a trim haircut, no and hair I'll, hanging I'll bet down. Your shirt yeah. was tucked in. Their your pants shirt was tucked in. You belt. wore a belt. You had socks and shoes on, <laughs> and girls wore dresses to the knee. No pants, no shorts, and one of one, one, one excuse me, I have a throat problem this morning. One of the girls said she was even sent home because she had a granny dress on. You're kidding. It went to her ankles because you could not wear clothes that were considered a fad. And yeah. a granny dress at that point, because the, the hippie, the movement, hippie movement, movement was sort of coming long, around, long dresses, long dresses yeah. and you couldn't wear those to school, and they would send you home Yeah, there to was, there was some interesting things. When I was in college, the shorts, the only time you were ever allowed to wear shorts, they were Bermuda shorts, and you wore knee socks, and you were on your way to play tennis or golf. And you or, had to, or to phys ed, the, some phys ed class. Right, and if you had to leave the dorm, you had to put on a raincoat to get there. Didn't matter what the temperature was. Was that not crazy? But and I remember when we suddenly could wear blue jeans. Yeah. But, so you know, it finally lightened up. But dress the dress codes. It's hard to imagine that these days. I remember at the at the Legion in, in, in the early seventies. Uh, some of the gentlemen that were on the board of directors came up with a dress code for the women. Yeah. And that involved, I think they could wear their dresses, their skirts, they couldn't be more than an inch above, above, the, the, knee. above the knee or something <laughs> like that. And then there was always these controversies during the middle of the night as, yeah. my, as my friends were sitting around <laughs> drinking their beer at the, in the bar and that Fuller I think that dress is too short, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I told him when I was a guy, y'all are ki killing me here. I mean, I mean, what am I supposed to do? Give me a tape yeah, measure and measure every girl, girl that dresses. comes in there? I mean, you know, for goodness sake. Then you get, then you get sued for harassment. <laughs> well, sexual harassment wasn't too popular Not back now, in those no, days. But it, it wasn't the thing, now, was but, uh, You know, there's you always know. an argument about uh, should there be a dress code, should there not be a dress code, you know, freedom of... Expression. Whatever expression and 
But then I noticed when I was teaching school that on the day that we'd have dress up day, all the students were so much better behaved. You know, the little boys would be in their ties and they would be so on point and that I, it was just something that was noticeable it changed their attitude somehow yeah oh, and you, some, you, excuse me go ahead something else about the dress code is anytime a young man or student left the premises of the school representing the school for anything be it football be it choir be it uh, you know whatever yeah they had to have a, a, a coat and a tie and represent their institution yeah. or their facility. You know, our partner, uh, Pam, um, who does our county work for her, when she was at MTSU, her her senior year, I think it was, they required them to dress up. Men had to wear suits, and et cetera, yeah. et cetera, so that, that when they got they out in the real world, it. they'd look like... They knew where they were going. Well, yeah, well, they, you, they knew what they were doing. And everything. Yeah. Uh, would you hire somebody that came in their blue jeans hanging off their behind and their underwear hanging underwear out the hanging top out. of it? No, I wouldn't. There's a commercial on TV with the girls back to the audience, and that's her pants are hanging down halfway mm -hmm. below her. Behind. I've seen that. And, I, and I'm saying to myself, what did that have to do with this commercial? Well, I'll tell you what it has to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you might know the answer. <laughs> well, actually, I'll let John tell you. But, but no, don't show, put, the, you're not throwing the, me into this the show fray. had something to do, or the commercial had something to do with plumbers. And uh, you know, yeah, that's right. It does. It does. It does. It's so good. plumbers are notorious for having for the, having their bending shirt. over. And, They're not wearing that shirt that's long enough. Exactly. Right. Okay. Plumbers okay. crack. Yeah. Right. Very I, well, good. John. So I just yeah. thought. It, See, I knew you could help me out with that. I just yeah. thought it was odd and not very appealing. Because I'm very interested in commercials, and I watch yeah, them and see but, what but, makes and, me laugh. And I don't remember. I don't know that I watched it all the way through, but. Uh, I, it might it might reflect on a way that no matter whether you think you can fix something or do something, not everybody's a plumber. Right. Call a real plumber. Okay, maybe might have been it. the commercial on the it, thing, it and it might so have it even been about. It. Maybe it was just to make people watch. Yeah. You know, maybe they thought, oh, That's this sort is an eye catcher. Attention. Yeah. It's an eye catcher, but if you don't know what the commercial was about, it did you absolutely no good for people to watch. I know. I mean, that's that's like and the that super, that's a like the Super Bowl days. commercials. Yeah, yeah, it happens. You a know, lot. when the dot coms were were spending all that money on Super Bowl commercials. Yeah, that was a that was man, what a cool commercial. But you didn't know whose product know it who's was, product. so it absolutely did no good. And, and that happens a lot these days because commercials are so good, the production of them are so good that they're quite entertaining. But a lot of times you don't know what, they, yeah, you, what they're selling. When, when it's over, you don't know what they're selling. One of selling. my favorite ones this week was Doritos, and I can't conjure up the whole commercial, but there's two children, a wife, and a cat, and. The father has got his bag of Doritos and it's empty. And he turns on this light that makes things glow in the dark. Yeah. And he's wondering who ate his Doritos. And there's his children with that the orange, know, the orange, all and that orange on their hands. And over here on the side, there's a cat. That and he was says, a good one. I Do we have that. a cat? <laughs> 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 or when yeah. did we get a cat? Now that, that caught uh, my attention. Well, no, Doritos, <laughs> they do a great job. They, they really do. They do a really, really, really good job. They have competitions, or they have had competitions where people send in commercials. Well, which is good because you know it's very hard. Uh, it's very hard for someone, say like me, sitting in Tallahoma, Tennessee, or you, or Jim, say, or the three of us. Okay. We speak sit for here and we come up. We come up with this great idea. Yeah. The Budweiser frogs. All right. That's one of the few that got through. Most of the time, these advertising agencies who Budweiser hires are not going to let somebody from outside outdo them. Well, yeah. right. They're going to use something that they design I and come Budweiser's up with. I love Budweiser's commercials. Yeah. I just use, I just use yeah. that for but example. But I do love their commercials. They're, but, they're always tender and touching, don't you think? Yeah. Except okay. the ones you don't see. There's, I, I like the commercials <laughs> that you don't get to see. We did a show called Sound Check one time 
uh, from the Legion, and what it was was on Thursday nights when the bands would come in to, to check their sound that we're going to play on Friday and Saturday, Jimmy and I would film them and we'd put them on the air live doing their sound check to where people would know what the band was going to be on Friday and Saturday night. And Bobby Martin was working at Miller, Miller at that point, yeah. and he gave us, Miller sponsored it, and he gave us a reel of commercials that that Miller had had done but decided not to use and so for one you, purpose or the other. Yeah. And and so we used them and they were hilarious. There was one where the the advertisement was for your shower beer container holder. Yeah. You know, and so here's a guy getting up in the morning and he goes in and there's a there's a, a, a con container holder stuck to the wall whereas he's taking his morning shower and drinking his Miller, he's got somewhere to put his beer. You know, they were some of the funniest things. Also, sometimes there's shocking commercials. Yes, and some of when them don't get used many, because many of that. Many, many eons ago when we were stationed in London and uh, we were living in a hotel because we didn't have a place to live yet, and uh, I, was, I had a TV station on that I thought was really fine for my children to watch. It was a children's show and they would be all right watching it. Then all of a sudden the commercial comes on there's this naked woman mm -hmm. taking a bath openly with advertising some kind of soap. But not a stitch on. I mean, they <laughs> what country were you in? I was in England. England. Well, that's the way they they do the next. And that was they like a long time ago. They long do time the ago. naked news over there. You know, yeah. and, which makes me think, of, you know, John, you're a musical expert because no. that's what you do. But I, I, on the way to work this morning to the studio this morning, I heard the song that I haven't heard in for years, and I, was, I think it was by T.G. Shepard, done in the early '70s, called. Older women are beautiful lovers. Make, make beautiful lovers. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I and I was wondering, how in the world did that get on the air in 1970s? Yeah. I mean, it was a little <laughs> bit suggestive. Yeah. You know. I mean, what do you think? Things just started to change. But it was it was it was not a pop song. It was not. It was it was a country song. Yeah. And all country songs have always been about drinking, cheating, lying, stealing, <laughs> yeah. and loving. Yeah. Uh, don't come home a drinking with love right on your, your life. Mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, 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 that was okay yeah. in the country, in country music, because yeah. that's what it was all about yeah. forever. I wonder if T.G. Shepard's still alive. I think he is. I, I don't know. I think yeah. it's time for us to wrap this oh, up. Yeah, okay. Don't you? Do you? Yeah, I Why? Do. I, I think we're I having think fun. We've said all we need to say. We're, 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 we're having a big job. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is not all useless drivel. This is some good drivel. Yeah, this is something that's stimulating. You make you think about stimulating it. Stimulating drivel. <laughs> that's right. Moving right along. But we, <laughs> now that we've been scolded, we'll take a short commercial break, and we'll be back with the rest of today's show. <laughs> don't you go away. Have you ever been involved in one of these and you need one of these? Then look no further than the Russell Barnett Certified Collision Center with a state-of-the-art facility, aluminum capabilities, lifetime paint guarantee, Russell Barnett Auto Rental, claims assistance from start to finish. We are here to serve you. So stop by and let us show you why we are number one, the Russell Barnett Certified Collision Center. All I have to do to think about what I was physically before and what I am now, and I don't ever want to go back to that original situation. The overall mission of the rehab team is always what is best for the patient and how we can facilitate maximum potential from every resident. Well, the most important thing to me is that I'm allowed to do whatever I need, want to do, you know. Everyday Miracles at Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 
I was discussing uh, some things I probably am not going to talk about on the air with my friend Paul Black. We'll tell him I'm a police chief. And this is our segment we call Police Pointers. And well, I agree. You know, what y'all were saying before is if you only could hear and see everything that goes on before the camera comes up. Yes. You know, I, those yeah, would right. be great bloopers <laughs> and, and right. uh, entertaining. Paul said that was the most 10 minutes, <laughs> biggest 10 minutes of useful dribble he'd ever heard. And, uh, and we'll, we'll never, never get, that, be, 10 we'll never get back. that 10 minutes back. That's right. That's right. Thank you very much, Paul. Some could say that about our hey, 10 they or 12 could, minutes together. And I'm sure do occasionally, yeah. you know. Although somewhere in this 10 minutes together, we're going to provide you with some useful information. It might be only two minutes out of the 10, but there's really some good stuff in here yeah. at some point that you need to know. Yeah. Well, we've been doing this now about three or four years now, yeah, so that's right. they haven't given us the big hook yet. <laughs> Absolutely not. And, you know, I'm always impressed that Paul comes in here with a topic in mind every other week, yeah. you know, and you'd think by now we'd run out of them. We may have done yeah. some of them twice, yeah, we're, we're, but it's because we they often, need to be done. Time of the year or things like yeah, that have, right. have certain things. and uh, uh, But, yeah, it's a good chance to be able to get information out to the public. And as I've told you before, many times when I'm out in the public, people will comment about seeing the show, and they never call you Mr. Fuller. I call you Mr. Fuller. They say, I see you and Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, they, I think uh, a lot of people feel like they know me, and I mm -hmm. wish that I knew their names when I run into them out, you know. Yeah. But unfortunately, you've seen me here, and I didn't see you. So, uh, But uh, yeah. uh, we always very much appreciate when people comment on yeah, and, and we get I get a lot of them. Somebody somebody called me by the way. I think it was on uh, Saturday, which was um, that would have been July first, and uh, mm -hmm. and said, uh, "When did y'all say we could shoot fireworks?" <laughs> and, and I said, "I said you can start today up until ten thirty. And uh, and you can shoot them until 11:30 on July 4th, and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I hung up, and I thought, didn't really know the person. I'm not sure how they got my number. Well, that, but uh, but uh, they must have been listening to but, plant that seed to call you and ask you about then it. Then I said, is that what Paul said, no. or was it the next day? I couldn't remember. <laughs> yeah. I thought these poor people get in trouble because no. I, I I sort of doubted myself there. Yeah. But I, that was correct. you are you were correct yeah. in that information. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But of course that didn't keep people from firing them beforehand or oh I know or yeah. outside of the the window of what was permitted. Yeah, as I've said many times, I live on the right on the line between Franklin County and, and Coffee County, but I live in the city limits of Tullahoma, so they're going off weeks oh, before, yeah. and they're probably still going off over there. I, I heard the, some just the other night over County. in my area, and it's like, okay, folks, it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because the officers up and leading up to the first, they were taking four, five, and six calls a night of fireworks calls. Really? And, you know, and we want to be sympathetic to people. Sure. We want to be, but, you know, when when we're getting called about it, that means there's some people that are being annoyed about it. Uh, I guess there's probably more people out there that, that than we know, the average person knows, that, that is mm -hmm. offended by that. Maybe. Uh, well, a lot of people, you know, but, and I think a lot of people understand, because I'll hear it, I'll see it in, in different postings on social media that, hey, the time is, as you said, July 1 through July 4. That's when you're supposed to do it. So mm -hmm. knock it off. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of like the city gives you a, a window to when it's permitted. Right. Stick to that. Do, do the right thing. Right. Uh, so we spend a lot of time leading up to those days and after those days of chasing down fireworks calls. Yeah. 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 Okay. But well, that I'm wasn't glad. what we came to talk about. I'm glad we didn't get anybody in trouble. But yeah, that's right, because you got a very inter interesting Scams. Topic. Scams. Yeah, yes. and we try to talk about scams all the time because it, it seems there's always something new coming up. One of the big things we worry about when the weather starts warming up are the people we call the travelers. Mm -hmm. The gypsy type people that come up and, hey, I'll seal your driveway for you for X number of dollars. They do, they'll, it looks good when they do it, but maybe if it rains later in the afternoon, it starts running down the driveway and, mm -hmm. you know, where they, they, they don't use good products. Uh, the people that claim they'll do your roofs for you, you know, they go up and do a roof inspection and they tear some shingles off mm -hmm. and then come down and, you know, you pay them and they do half the job and they're gone. Right. 
So we, we talk about that in the warm weather, but then we seem to have some of these scams that are just continually, just ever going. You know, the, the email scams where someone writes and says, hey, you know, I've got $20 million that we need to put in, you know, accounts, you know, and if you'll send us your information. I don't think we've had too many people that fall for that. I, I'm just, I would be surprised if people actually Not too fall many, for that. but then we have those that will just receive a check in the mail one day, and it may be for $20,000. Mm -hmm. It looks like a check. I mean, it's got routing numbers, account numbers, maybe the name of a legitimate bank, and an, everything that makes you think this is a good check. Uh, and then you contact them and they say, well, you've got to give us a $200 processing fee mm -hmm. and that needs to pay up, be paid up front. Mm -hmm. So someone sends them $200, they take the check to the bank, two or three days later they find out the check's no good. Right. And their $200 is gone. Right. Um, you know, and, and we tell people, if you didn't expect to get that money, why do you think it's someone just out of the blue is sending you a check for money? Mm -hmm. And then the the other giveaway should be now you got to send them some money first uh, to to process the check. Mm -hmm. and, and how many of us would say, well, that doesn't make sense. Why don't you just take the processing fee out of the amount of the check? Absolutely. And you know, but we do have people that fall for that, and will come and tell us, hey, I spent three hundred, five hundred, three thousand dollars, and now I find out this check is no good. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell people to ask themselves two questions. Did you, did you enter a contest? That's you know, like the, the, the big one, the, uh, the clearing uh, house. Well, clearing I didn't want to say any names, but the clearing house. Mm -hmm. You know that, hey, you've won. They don't, they don't do business like mm -hmm. that. Um, so if you didn't enter it, you're sure not going to win. We right. talk about that with a lottery. You'll never win the lottery if you don't play it. Right. So why would you expect someone all of a sudden to say, here's $50,000? Mm -hmm. Uh, and secondly, is it too good to be true? If it's too good to be true, probably, it's probably yeah, not probably, true. You know, all not. of us would love to have that windfall of getting a sure. check for ten Absolutely. grand or something. Yeah. But you know, we don't want to be that person that gets so wrapped up and excited about it that we give up our own money just to find out it was nothing. Right. So, and I always suggest ask one of your family members to look at it. You know, take you out of the picture and let one or two family members or a close friend look at it mm -hmm. and get their advice and follow it because mm -hmm. I'd say 99.9% .9 of the times when you let someone else look at it they're going to tell you man that's a scam mm -hmm. but we've still had people that were so excited about getting money that no matter what their entire family may say it's a scam they still do it. Mm -hmm. I've had people call me and say how do I tell my spouse my, my other it's a scam. I said well if you can't convince them it's a scam and it's your money, there's not much I can do. You know, other right. I, I'll talk to them, but it doesn't always work. Right. And uh, you know, I've actually had people come in my office that say, "I can't stop so and so from writing a check." Right. And of course, I look at them like, "Well, maybe take the check from the checkbook <laughs> from them." Right. But there are people that really get so wrapped up in that possibility of getting free money for nothing that. Uh, they will do that. Yeah, and, and you know, you're more likely to get struck by lightning than you would be to get yeah. free money. So. Now, I know probably every one of us, and I, I, I say that with some confidence, have gotten that call from the IRS sure. that says, you know, you are going to be sued, you're going to be arrested, you're going to be charged, you owe money, call this number, and you know, and and give. And we get people that call us and say, IRS is going to, you know. They don't do business they that don't way. Do business that way. IRS has said we don't make phone calls. You know, you'll get letters from us. You know, but, and that's further complicated relative to the IRS thing, because now they have engaged outside agencies to collect past due funds yeah. for them legitimately. But they don't. They're not. They don't do business that way either. You already right? know that it's coming. Right. I mean, by then yeah. you've already known that you've already yeah, gotten exactly. that letter. Right. Um, but look, the other day I got three calls in one day from the same phone number in California, mm -hmm. same recording. I don't answer it because I know it's, you know, and it's saying this is the IRS and doing all this. And so I sit at my desk and I thought, well, I'm just going to call that number back. So I called it back and 
you know, when I call and you call a business, you would expect it gets answered with uh, Tullahoma Police Department or Channel 6, mm -hmm. how can I help you? Or I, I get a, hello. <laughs> yeah, right. So I just sit there and they go, hello. <laughs> I just sit there and they hung up on me. Yeah. I give them about a minute and I call that number back again. And I'm still waiting to hear a Internal Revenue Service, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Hello. I said, Unbelievable. I hung up again. I did it one more time. Yeah. I, I'm not doing it to be malicious or mean. I was doing it thinking maybe I just got a bad employee that didn't yeah. identify themselves as. So yeah. I tried a third time. I got the same thing. Yeah. You know, hello. And no telling where that was coming from. It could have been no some foreign country. And then I hung up and I thought maybe I should try to write down my script and say, this is the Internal invest Internal Revenue Service Investigative Division yeah. calling you about. But then I thought, well, they'll get me for impersonating the IRS. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I, I suspect you caused them some grief if you just called up and said, this is Paul Blackwell, I'm Chief Police. Well, I'm hoping Tullahoma. they had caller ID and they would yeah. see Tullahoma Police Department on right. their phone. Exactly. But, you know, people always ask, what do you do? And I say, ignore them. You know, just, yeah. uh, just don't, don't talk to them. Um, but that day, it just kind of struck me. Three times in a day, I'm going to call this number and exactly. just see what happens. You know, and, and there's, some, there's some scams going around. I think I've had that this call, too, where they'll try to get you to say, they'll, they'll call up and say, can you hear me? And if you say yes, uh, they've recorded that, mm -hmm. and, and they use that to try to... To do something to, else. Yeah, do to something to else. Voice over you, stuff. Yeah, and, that yeah. you... That you or they ask you to hit a, hit a number, you yeah. know, punch something on your phone. Right. And sometimes that sets up like a three-way calling that allows someone to make long-distance phone calls at your expense, uh -huh. and you get cut out of the conversation. Right. So, you know, you have to be, uh, electronics have simplified our life, but they've also made they've it also very complicated, complicated it and made it another avenue for the criminal to take advantage of people. Yeah. So, you know, we just tell people, you know, don't get wrapped up in the excitement of the moment. Uh, think about it. Let someone else, a family member, a close friend, review it. And then if they give you advice, follow that advice. Because chances are they're, they, they see through that excitement and the smoke screen. Yeah, because chances are there's no free money out there. There's no free money. And people will call us and yeah. say, do you want this number? Say, well, we've got these numbers. I mean... Yeah. You know, there's not going to be a lot of follow-up at our level, at the local level. Right. The federal agencies, maybe they can look at it, but yeah. you know, we don't have the means or oh, resources. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Always good information, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very Hopefully much. Hopefully that 10 minutes was something someone can walk away with. <laughs> well, it, at least five or six of it was, well, for okay. sure. Okay, all right. You know, yeah. Anyway, I wasn't, I wasn't timing this, but I'm sure there's useful <laughs> information <laughs> in it because there always is anyway. Good. Well, it's all good right. to be here. Oh, folks, we'll be right back right after these messages. for Healing provides medical care to the working uninsured of Coffee, Franklin, and Moore Counties. We are in Tullahoma from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursdays, and in Manchester on Fridays from 8 to 12. We provide primary medical care and offer an in-house disease management program. My name is Rosie Mitchell, and I would just like to say I am blessed to have partners in my life. Please call 455-5014 for more information. Thank you for being one of our Partners for Healing. Hello, this is Janie Price. When my husband Ray Price would tour across the country, his favorite place to dine was Cracker Barrel Old Country Store locations. His favorite thing to order was the Uncle Herschel. And the beauty of it all is forever, you'll be holding me to. I miss Ray dearly, and I'm so proud that his last album, Beauty Is, The Final Session, is available at his favorite restaurant. I love Project includes a duet with Martina McBride and harmony vocals from Vince Gill. Ray believed this to be the best recording he had ever made. Oh, I wish I was 18 again. I think you'll agree when you pick up your copy of Beauty Is the Final Sessions at a Cracker Barrel Old Country Store location near you or at crackerbarrel.com. A world without breast cancer is a world with more birthdays. And signing up for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk will help us get there faster. 
The American Cancer Society invests in groundbreaking breast cancer research, and we're part of every community. In fact, one in two women newly diagnosed with breast cancer turns to us for support. Sign up today at makingstrideswalk.org. Together, we can finish the fight against breast cancer. Hello, everyone. I'm John Rickman. And I'm Pat Welch, and we're here with the fifth installment of Conversations with John and Pat. John, you know, uh, I had a, I've had a great time, and uh, my wife has felt like I may have watched uh, Channel 6 and also the Internet more than I should have, <laughs> admiring ourselves on our first four installments. And um, I don't know if it's the light. Admiration might not be the word. It may be as, so you don't embarrass yourself. Well, it may have been watching it with a critical eye. <laughs> But uh, I have noticed that both of us have, have uh, some of our hair has departed. Uh -huh. And um, I don't know that we're going to be able to mask that. No. Uh, has Philip got the, uh-oh, there's a. There's a picture of uh, Al Pacino. No, that's Pat Well, That's your early picture, that's, Pat. That's my picture when I was at Motlow. And, uh, I had a lot of confidence then. Has <laughs> <laughs> that diminished somewhat since that time? Uh, the worst part about it, of being as vain, I, I'm a sinful person. This is Good Friday that we're taping this. <laughs> when I close my eyes and think of myself, that's how I see myself. Yeah, and, see yourself uh, and there. there's times when I look in the there. mirror that I'm a little bit surprised. There's, now there's John. That's on my wedding day. That's his wedding day, and. Uh, I think we talked last uh, one of the several of the segments beforehand that we'd make trips over to Depot Street in Chapel Hill where your mother lived before she moved to Tallahoma. And she had a spare bedroom that had all three of the children's wedding day pictures up, big pictures. And the first time I saw John's, I thought, wow, uh, <laughs> if Walt Disney had seen that, uh, Net Funicello would have another leading man in Beach Blanket Bingo. He, you know. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you. Uh, but, uh, you know, years ago, my brother lost his hair long before I did mine. Mine, once I got into real estate full time, I guess that was a pretty tough job because I lost quite a bit of my hair during the real estate years. But anyway, my brother lost his hair first. And I wrote a song about, I think I'm going bald. And my brother has done this song many times and maybe I can get through it. Won't you listen to my sad story? It's a tale of trouble and woe. I've been depressed for such a long time. I gotta tell someone I know. Now it's not a laughing matter. It's a serious problem to me. So perhaps you can help me get a hold of myself in this time of misery. Oh no, my hair is falling out. I think I'm going bald. I've spent a lot of sleep this night just worrying about it all. I stand for the mirror helplessly and watch it fall. Yes, my hair is falling out. My God, I think I'm going bald. I've stood on my head for hours. I've eaten vitamins by the pound. I've read every hair care magazine. I've been to every MD in town. I've tried every miracle quick grow drug that's ever been advertised. Used every miracle, <laughs> used every remedy known to man. And some that men ain't tried. Must have styled my hair a thousand different ways. I fluff and tease each tiny strand and I freeze it quick to spray. I guess you could say I got hair, but the sad fact still remains. See you lying on the floor in the bathtub drain. Oh no, my hair is falling out. I think I'm going bald. I've spent a lot of sleep this night just to worrying about it all. I stand for the mirror helplessly and watch it fall. Yes, my hair is falling out. My God, I think I'm going bald. I massage my scalp and goose grease, rare herbs and alcohol. I 
<laughs> oh, this is tough. <laughs> That's a hard song. Well, Pat, let's just end it right there. It is a, it is a, it's a hard a, topic. Well, I had to do a lot of research in that song, and uh, I hate to end it that way, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. All the words just don't come, and I don't have the words standing out before me. Well, the, but you get the gist of the song, don't you? You get plenty of gist on it. And uh, while you were singing that, it reminded me of what our good friend Jackie Rabbis. <laughs> you know, uh, he thought while he was recruiting at, uh, for baseball team at Motlow State, he had to have hair and he didn't have any. And uh, he had a tremendous wraparound that he coffeeered every morning. In fact, his wife told me that they had mirrors on all the walls in the bathroom, if you can imagine all that, uh, and the stories that could lead into that. But uh, he spent something like a half hour every morning getting it all that spiraled and then sprayed where it would stay. You mean Jackie did that? And Jackie did that. <laughs> and we're, okay. we're laughing at Jackie when he'd get excited. He had kind of a high-pitched voice. And they moved from Sharondale to uh, off of King's uh, Lane. Royal Court. Royal Court at the, the height of this uh, spiraling <laughs> and uh, spraying. And uh, his wife told him that uh, they weren't going to have as many mirrors at the new house and that that aerosol smell that was permanently embedded in that house in Shandale was out. <laughs> and uh, he went and uh, uh, had uh, Mr. Spry, I believe, or Mr. Ray cut it all off at one whack. And uh, he said that they pulled all the spiral off <laughs> off, off of one side. And he told me, he said, you know, he said, I was a hippie on one side and a GI on the other. <laughs> You know, they, Chris Chris has uh, told people, you know, Chris is losing a little hair, too. He's getting to that age where he's losing some, and, and some people say, uh, Chris, are you losing hair? And he said, yeah, I've been to our family reunions. I know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Chris is John's son, and my son is, is also named John, and he's losing some of his, and, uh -huh. and uh, he's made some caustic remarks about the genealogy effects <laughs> taking over. <laughs> well, John, we're getting close, I believe. Pat, Pat, one thing I'd like to say, if we go back a few segments to the Chapel Hill ghost light. Okay. Uh, someone has asked me, uh, I didn't mess that song up, by the way, uh, that uh, who was the fellow who died on the railroad track? And the first one to die was a fellow named uh, Skip Agent. And that was back in the 40s, and maybe 43, 40 five, somewhere in that general area. And he was the first one that uh, passed away uh, or got run over by the train at the railroad track. And I thought it was interesting. I did see the birth, uh, the death certificate one time and, uh, and uh, Miss Mary Rosell, she was the health county nurse. She was the one that signed where the coroner normally signed. Wow. So I thought that was very interesting. Well, for an unrehearsed follow-up to that, um, I was really surprised uh, when I got on the internet to either admire or critique ourselves. <laughs> we got on the ghost light. There was a lot of information there, and there was one uh, theory at least put out that somebody had killed the gentleman first, and then laid him on the tracks, yeah. hoping that the train would just dis yeah. would dismember him so bad that they would have a hard time finding the cause of the of the, of the death. You know, forensics weren't. They didn't have CSI back then. No, they didn't have CSI back then. Yeah. Okay. Well, we just wanted to clear that little fact up. All right. And that's probably close to the end of the fifth segment. And it's not the end of the stories, it's, it's, as, as I said last time, unless management says it is. <laughs> And gentlemen, this is the paint. Uh oh, I just knocked out a tree over. This is the paint doctor. I got the color wheel. Now, you know what a color wheel is? It is the wheel at the paint works where you pick all your colors to paint your room. It could be a multicolored beard, 
It could be a underarm fan. You never can tell. One thing we do know is that it's time to paint. You know, you can make your wife very happy if you go to your house and paint some rooms or you paint, you paint the outside of the house, the inside of the house. It makes them very, feel very good because you work hard for them and they like that. All women like to see their man sweat. You know, they do, they do. Honeydew is what they do. And you get to do it too. So you go to the paint works at 1960 North Washington Street and you see David, David Eichenen over there. And he's the real paint doctor. He fix you up with color. It's so nice when the color is right. Go to Paintworks today, Martin Senor. See, Martin C. Nor, right there. Martin C. Nor out of, out of the Paintworks. Bye, and we see you next time. Oh, I'm burning up. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Cool off this summer at Tellahoma Splash Island. Fun for all ages. Three 25-foot slides, lazy river, fun water features for toddlers, tasty food items are available. All this and more, only $5 from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 1 to 5. Join the fun at Tellahoma Splash Island. Welcome back. This segment's all about art. I'm so happy today to have with me Diane Wibert. 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 I knew I'd get that wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. And Chloe Leet. Mm -hmm. And they're with, uh, they're from Manchester. Tell me about your shop that you've just opened, right? Right. It's uh, Black Iris Arts. We just moved to the square in Manchester. Where did you get that name, Black Iris? That's really pretty. I like that. The owner of the shop, Teresa Cravens, uh, one of her sons helped her come up with that well, name. Well, it's very she nice. Just, Black Iris? Yes, Black we'll Iris that. Arts. And it's an art community. We have 10 different artists in there that do a variety of art. They're all local artists. We have Chloe that does painting like this. Like that. We have another artist that does this type of multimedia art um, using I love different. The face yeah, on yeah. That. That <laughs> this is called Saint Leo. Saint Leo. Saint Leo. Saint Leo. Okay. Yeah. We have an oil painting down there that's by a young girl uh, who's only 18 years old and works in every media. She is very, very talented. This one the on bunny rabbit. The bunny rabbit. Yeah. It makes me think of Beatrice Potter. Yeah. That is really sweet. It. It just what's really. What's that is. media again? That one's oil. And it's just very interesting. Every morning, every time I come in the shop, I see that painting, and it just makes you smile. Well, it just feels like you can reach out and feel the softness <laughs> on that bunny. Right. And I, that must be a, hard to do. Absolutely. I mean, you know, for a young lady, she's very, very talented. We need to tell people where you're. I know you're on the square, but it, it's where, on, is that about where the old theater used to be? I don't, I don't. It's on well, the same it on side. This. It's it, on the same side. It's on the same it's, side. It's 103 yeah. West Main. West mm -hmm. Main. It used to be Step in Style. Step in Style. Yeah, a lot of people and remember it, it as open? Step in Style. What time is it open during the day? We're open 11 to 6 on Tuesday through Friday, and on six. Saturday we're open 10 to 3. Now your event that's coming up that for the ladies' night out. Ladies' night out on the square is this Thursday the. Thir the 13th, the yes, 13th. between yes. 5 and 8 o'clock. Between 5 and 8, it's for it. all the open shops. Open for free. On, yeah, mm -hmm. all the shops on the square will be But don't open. leave your money at home because there's lots of good things you can buy. It, right. This stuff right here, for instance, Absolutely. all this is for sale. And, and it's all you, handmade. 
even though we're calling it ladies night out you can bring your husband if they're going to carry the money in your purchases exactly <laughs> so but, <laughs> or a good um, checkbook this is mosaic art we have a young lady that will teach you how That's to do beautiful. mosaic we offer classes in fused glass and stained glass. What is the difference in fused glass and stained glass? Fused glass goes in the kiln. You start with, I'll hold this up here, a plain piece of glass and then you cut out different shapes and lay them on it and then we and put then it in put the it kiln on. and fuse it and then this one was then later put on another mold to give it kind of that it's a very interesting. Yes. Very artistic. Yes. But that's, that's a project that you would do in the fused glass class, or you could make a set of coasters. You would take the coasters and you would put whatever design you wanted on them. We've had students that put their initials on them. Yeah. Um, different designs. We had a lady that put martini glasses you on. You mind them. telling how much it costs to take a class? Thirty-five dollars for, for the fused glass classes. For how many classes? Is so that it's one? a one three-hour class, one, and, you and you'll walk come out. out with a piece of art. Yes, you. Well, you'll have great. to come back and pick it up because well, it has to go in the kiln. But still, <laughs> but that's a good You deal. will have completed a piece of glass work. If you take the stained glass class, that's about a six week class, learning how uh, to do stained glass. Um, and that's a $225 class, but that's all your materials and, and finished I, piece. I for one know what it costs to go buy <laughs> a piece that somebody mm -hmm. has made, so that is a good deal. That's okay. beautiful, I, honestly. Once you've taken stained glass and made it, you understand, you understand why they why cost. It costs a lot of money. That is so pretty hanging in a window. Yes. At we least have that's a, my favorite place. a young man and a young woman that work with us that do wood art, and that piece of art is called fractal art, where they fractal? put fractal fractal art. They put a coating over the wood, and then they put two electric probes on it, and it makes it follows the grain of the wood and burns that into that it. That is beautiful. I love that. And it's that. very different. They've done it on a couple of vases and on pictures like that. That is um, really nice. We have a gentleman, oops, wrong way, that does the. Um, is that wrought iron? Yeah, it's cut iron work yeah. that he does. This one's a cat. We have some with um, Initials, deers maybe. and flags and all kinds of different animals and you can get you know like if you wanted your initials here yeah. and you can, can hang get, this on the wall and yes. then it shows up yes really good yes that, I think that's wonderful and yes. you could put it in the window if you wanted to you can hang it oh, in yeah it. or you can There's, set it in a frame like these I'm assuming yeah yeah absolutely There's lots of places you can put that he, so he has you, some flags that are absolutely gorgeous oh I'll, and they're colored yeah yeah they're, and this uh, lady's not out. Let's give the time on that again. It's five to eight, and it's on the square in downtown Manchester. It involves all the shops and restaurants that so are on the square. So everybody around the square is involved, and they're open. Five to eight. Five to eight. And so we're you also grab dinner at the. Uh, what is the brick oven? Or the brick oven one of those, or the mercantile, or the mercantile coffee then, cafe, any of those that are open. And also currently playing at the Manchester Art Center is Funny Girl. Uh, that's and a big ambitious play. It, it's they're yeah. doing a marvelous job on it. I saw it the other night. But some of the actors from Funny Girl are going to be walking around the square Sweet. in costume and yeah. handing out information on the Manchester Art Center yeah. and the different shows. There's so that much are going on in this both towns. I mean, in yes. Coffee <laughs> County and the other counties surrounding us. But you guys have got it all together because you've got you're blending the arts, and mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, we're we're trying to keep it local artist and keep it different styles. The green vase that's up here. I is, love this. Is Can you see this? <laughs> I'm going to hold that. Well, you had it. I'm sorry. I should leave it alone. I think that is absolutely amazing. That's a piece of slumped glass where you 
fuse two pieces of glass together. In this case, it was clear glass and green glass. And you fuse them in the kiln, and then you put them over a mold that drapes them that, down. I love it. That's really pretty. And then pretty. it's up to the kiln gods what it comes to out keep like. It. Yeah. I mean, Chloe, Sometimes. You, you're, you're the visual artist here. What inspired you to put this together? That that comes from a, a photo photographic book on Ellis Island. Um, he went in and took pictures of the peeling paints and the peeling rooms and the empty rooms and it's just a fantastic book and I'm just fascinated by the paint. Yeah. You know, you can see so many layers and you can see so much history just in looking, just at, in that. looking at that. Yeah. Piece. And this is a this is a method we use a credit card. Um, oh. we start out of course with the base layer and that's acrylic and then we uh, start applying the paints with the credit card. That's interesting. And we fracture it you with the credit card and everything. Stick the credit card in the paint and yeah, we and we just rub it, it on there and, and there. uh in, in different various ways. And it, it's, it's a lot of fun to, to do. A, this is a door. Yeah, that's a door. This. That's the door to the linen room that it's used that's, to be. That's interesting. And did yeah. you do this one over here? Uh, no, this is Catherine Sherrill. Oh, she's no. she's um, especially good at this type of art and she has a lot of other things in there. She's the one who actually taught me to do that. And so you also teach classes. Yes, I do teach classes. Uh, I'm always there on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Why don't we give a phone Wednesdays. number in case somebody wants to get in touch with you guys. All right. Well, they can call me at 8410811. 8410811. Right. And they can call the Black Iris Arts uh, community itself at 931-952-2873. And we'll, anyone will answer the phone there at that time and take the okay. information. And, and you can get information. information on any of these classes right. that are going on. And right. don't forget to go Thursday night because that's going to be a and we keep fun it, thing. And we keep it inexpensive so that we can introduce yeah. art to anybody. You there's, know, um, I noticed there's jewelry. and That was an intriguing mm -hmm. bracelet over there. Uh, how, how long have you been doing? Did you grow up doing art or did you just suddenly one day wake up and think, I'm going to be creative? I've done art for probably 20 years in different forms. I did some painting. My late husband and I did woodworking. I um, of course, I grew up doing needlepoint and cross mm -hmm. stitch and all of that type of thing. But about three years ago, I decided I needed one more hobby. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I went something in. Something to fill your days. <laughs> yeah, something else. Um, so I went in and took a stained glass class, and I haven't left. <laughs> you know, Shelby Martin, do you remember mm -hmm. hearing of Shelby? She and I went to high school together, and she was a fantastic stained glass person, but she was also a fantastic artist. Mm -hmm. And she told me that when she fi finally got into stained glass, she just couldn't stop. It's addictive. It, it was addictive, yeah. and she, and it was sad to me that she died so young because her legacy lives on through her beautiful artwork. Well, the and fused not, glass takes so many forms, too, with this stuff and that. Yeah. And this yeah, that is an also is that fused, fused? fused glass where it's painted on a mold first. You paint the mold with fine powder glass okay. and then you fire it and, and then it, you, yeah, it gets this. I, I mean, it's amazing to me that this came out perfect. The, all, the, all the things are perfect. Well, why don't we just tell people what a piece like this would cost? This one would cost you $35. And that's a good deal. Yes. Because yes. it would, it probably cost several hours of time, at least three hours, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, one, I did this one, and it yeah. was, it's one of, one of a kind. One yes. of a kind, and you yeah. never want to see another see two one. Of, two that's, of anything. That's, with, to me, that's the beauty mm -hmm. of that's it. That's one of the great things about our shop. When you come in to find somebody a gift, you've got something that's unique. You've got something that's mm -hmm. unique, one of a you're kind. You're not going to see somebody on the street yeah, wearing the same the, thing you or know, having the same bracelet. Right. Yes, it's we have stuff. several different jewelry artists. Um, the I lady that Pat O'Connor does. That's got, it's wiring of some kind. Right. It's it's twisted wire that she does a lot of it's with her yeah. jewelry. Um, I'm so afraid we'll break something. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Catherine Sherrill that did that painting is also a jewelry artist, and this is a bracelet and earrings that she looks, made. Looks a little bit like pearls. Yeah, she Maybe. works. She works mostly in pearls and silver and gold. I see. All of her earrings will have silver or gold. Well, honestly, it seems to me like it's a great place to go and get all kinds of gifts. I can see this on some sweet little 16-year-old mm -hmm. when they have yeah. their 16th birthday. It's only eighteen dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. That's, right. It's right. not a fortune like a lot of places. The you other go to. necklaces that are laying down there are pieces of fused glass that we've made in molds, and you come in and you can pick out your own colors. We've had grandmothers come in that that make something in their granddaughter's birthstone color for them, That's a necklace sweet, yeah. for them, or a necklace with their initial on. And there's so many times that you think everybody has everything in the world that they need. So what am I going to get? Mm -hmm. And yep. to find something original, you know they don't have it. That's perfect. Even the, the lady we have that makes the pocketbooks, like the one Oh, we didn't mention the pocketbook. The pocketbook that's... We can't hardly see it. Let's pull that up. She hand makes this, correct? She hand makes and designs these, and they're so clever in that... First of all, these unsnap so that you can so extend it. So it can be worn it. A, carried but a different way. But she puts way. a lot of time and effort into them, and they're unique oh with my, zippers. Oh my, pockets everywhere and yes, zippers. Yes, zippers, and pockets, places and I for think everything. the cute thing is all the zippers have a little angel oh, hanging sweet. from them. Yeah. I don't think there's any way we can show that, but they have a little angel they're hanging from them. They're very well from, lined. They're it's heavy. excellent. She makes all different materials here. and sizes, and she makes this one little little thing that's called a tea caddy and it's Bethy bags. Yeah. Cute. It's a small um, tea caddy thing that you can carry with you that you can carry your tea bag in and your sweet oh, and low and <laughs> for people <laughs> that you want understand to, at our age yeah. we want to take you our own want, tea with you us. Want and, a cup of yes. tea. and uh, she makes all kinds of unique things like that and different types of bags. And she is a local artist. Yeah. Well, I am so proud of all the artists in our community, all the way from visual to talent on the stage. And when I first moved to this area, the only game in town, as far as the arts went, was the community playhouse. Mm -hmm. And it's been a pleasure for me to watch community theaters grow up and art centers open all around the area. We're very fortunate. We're very mm -hmm. blessed because I think yes. it keeps you off the street, gives you something that has integrity to do. And uh, well, I admire both of you for the work that you do. And Just like the Manchester Art Center offers programs for children of all ages. We have the We Actors Guild for exactly. young children. We have the Teen Actors Guild, and of course then the shows with the adults in. But we offer something for everybody in the community. And when you come see the programs it's and not, you see yeah. how talented they are. It's basically an are, ageless thing. Absolutely. I mean, creativity doesn't stop when you get old. No, it, no. It, art, and it, go, it, it hit, I think, the, one of the most wonderful things. It, a lot of people that are plagued with some form of mental illness, say, or whatever, if you can do something with your hands, Mm -hmm. It's our sing, our mm -hmm. act, or whatever. It takes up, up the time that you might spend being depressed. Yeah. It's a wonderful outlet. Well, I'll tell you, Peggy, um, one of the things that got us started painting again, all of us had jobs. We raised children. We stopped our arts to do all of exactly. that. We dabbled in it as teenagers and as young people and then stopped. We retired and we decided, okay, now I've got the time. Let's get back to it and see if we can do it. Well, it took me a few years before sure. I had anything I wanted to show anybody. Well, it takes but confidence, I I've think. I've had women come to me who've just lost their husbands and they sit and they cry and we talk. And when they leave, it's been therapeutic. Sure it is. It's, mm -hmm. they lose themselves in those hours that they're doing artwork. And it's so, they it's, forget. So much better or they, than taking Or they a have drug. somebody to, to communicate yeah. with about how they're it feeling really and it brings that out. And uh, to me, art is therapy. Art is therapy. And don't forget that phone number if you need to know something about the Black Iris uh, place in Manchester. Right. And try your best to show up sometime during 5 till 8 on Thursday, on Thursday evening for their uh, ladies' night out. And their husbands are welcome. 
remember they have to bring some money. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I'm sure that you let them in whether they have not money or not. Some people want to browse today and buy tomorrow. Well, that's, that's not right. a bad thing right. either. That's right. right. That's not a you bad. Know, they can come be in and remember selected. where you can get and that gift. And what you, well, remember what you see there. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it seems to me like you have something for everybody. And our classes are not just women taking them. We have some husband and wives mm -hmm. that come good, in yeah. and take them. The fused art classes, we've had groups come in for a bridal shower and everybody makes something, yeah. you know. And well, I guess we're probably getting to the end of this segment and mm -hmm. uh, any last words you guys want I'd li to? I'd like to also introduce them to the Canvas and Cork Chillers where groups get together oh, and okay. paint together and they can bring their own beverage, I won't say what kind, on television, but they can bring whatever they like to drink and we idea, have snacks yeah. and they just get together and paint with me or they do glass or whatever. And, they and do that? Uh, Well, I do those, I do the Canvas and Cork Chillers the first and the third Fridays of every month. And six what do you call at it six again? p.m. Canvas and cork chiller. Canvas. 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 Okay, Here's I'm sorry. your canvas, okay. and the cork is. I got it. All right. Okay. Well, that's clever. <laughs> and you clever. come and chill. That's clever. So you chill come and chill and, uh, out and do artwork. Yeah, and, and we get we get all kinds of groups together to do that, young and old. That's great. Mm -hmm. And on the second and fourth Fridays, we have play with glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's from six to nine in the six evening. Six to nine in mm -hmm. the evening, and uh, they come and pay and do the class and right. enjoy. Actually, have a social, good time. It's a social thing too. Mm -hmm. Yes, it? it's a lot of fun. Yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. Well, you girls have just really got it all together. I'm real proud of you. Thank you. I, th I think we need to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And the Black Iris sounds like a place to go to me. Absolutely. I look forward to seeing you guys right. coming back. Thank okay? you. And we hope to see you we'll at be the back. Black Iris. <laughs>
in Tullahoma, the Lions Clubs, the Kiwanis Clubs. There used to be a Civitan Club here, an Optimist Club, and the uh, uh, Junior Chamber of Commerce, and there are other uh, clubs too. One in particular, though, people asked me about, I said, well, how long has the Rotary Club been in Tullahoma? And I said, well, I said, it's the oldest continuous service club in Tullahoma. Uh, it was founded or organized in 1921, and they received their charter in 1922, which makes it 80 years old, and it's uh, been going strong ever since. And uh, the Rotary Club was founded in Chicago in 1905 by, by an attorney up there by the name of Paul Harris. Uh, he was in his office daydreaming, I think, one day and said, hey, uh, his secretary or another attorney in there or somebody visiting with him and said, you know, said we ought to get together with some other business and professional people and exchange ideas about our career and, and our business. And uh, sure enough, uh, they started uh, meeting together, four or five of them in different offices or different uh, uh, restaurants for lunch. and. Uh, that's the reason they called it the Rotary Club, because they rotated between offices and they um, began to get organized informally, then formally, and they have a classification system uh, in Rotary whereby uh, only one uh, or two from the different careers uh, are classified uh, to be and to have membership. In other words, they wouldn't want uh, 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 50 or 60 insurance people or 50 or 60 grocery men or uh, all of the same vocation. They want to diversify so they, they could exchange ideas about their career and businesses and meet new people and it, that's the way it's been ever since it started. And um, the Telehoma Club, as I mentioned, was uh, chartered in 1922. The first president was a fellow by the name of Mr. Sharp Lanham that founded Lanham Manufacturing Company, which is now worth sports. But uh, they met, <clears throat> there's about, I think, 15 and 20 of them met in the basement of the King Hotel for a number of years. And um, they would have uh, programs among themselves or an outside speaker, or they have a big variety of programs. They have program chairman uh, for each week, and they, they meet every week in the year except at Christmas time. And uh, they, they don't meet on uh, the Christmas week or, or other time occasionally. But anyway, they do meet regularly. And one of the requirements for the membership is that members do have to attend their meetings or make up in, at, a, at a nearby club. Uh, speaking of nearby clubs, the Tullahoma Rotary Club uh, founded and was the the founding father of the Winchester Club and also the Manchester Club. Um, up until recent years, there was uh, 15, I believe, clubs in the, 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 this district, uh, District 6, 7, 8, and today there are 63 clubs in this district that is from Lebanon to, uh, uh, to uh, Lewisburg and, and on over to as far east as uh, Marstown and Knoxville and Oak Ridge, Chattanooga, uh, and a lot of the clubs meet in the morning. There are two club, Rotary Clubs in Tullahoma, the Noon Club, which is the oldest one, and it uh, established the Morning Club in 1995, so that those that uh, could not attend uh, noon meetings could, uh, could attend morning meetings. Uh, the Morning Club now meets at the St. Barnabas uh, uh, Church at uh, 6.45 every Tuesday. The Noon Club uh, had to move because from the basement of the King Hotel because they outgrew it and um, met at the, uh, in the dining room of the First Methodist Church for years and years and many, many years. And again, they outgrew that and uh, met at the, uh, what used to be the Commodore, which is now the Executive Inn in their dining room and uh, outgrew it and for a short time moved out to uh, Arches on South Anderson Street. Well, that wasn't uh, uh, big enough and the way the 
dining room was arranged, it could not be the fellowship that's necessary for good rotary meetings. So we were, they were invited to meet at the Telehoma Golf and Country Club, and which they still meet there. They uh, have 125 members, and about, oh, I'm guessing now, about 15 or 20 years ago, uh, up until that time, Rotary had always been a male organization. No particular reason for it, except it was just that way. But now, uh, I guess a, a good 20% of the membership in Rotary is women, and, and they are leaders in their profession or business too. And um, the uh, Rotary stretches throughout the world, and many of their programs certainly are just local programs, like they sponsor Boy Scout troops, they sponsor a young man to, to, to Boy State every year, and have been for, for many, many years. And um, scholarships, they have a program where they uh, send uh, high school or college graduates on uh, leaves of, uh, of uh, study in foreign countries. Uh, the exchange students do that. And we have a, a program whereby a group of uh, non-Rotarians uh, come from a district uh, on uh, uh, some other continent, come and visit. I know last year there were five or six Russians that came to this area, uh, Russian business people, and they were delightful and en enjoyed their visit here. And we have the exchange groups that go uh, uh, to Europe and South America and every other place. And there's a, a foundation called the Paul Harris Foundation that uh, uh, a Rotarian or anybody else can be a, a Paul Harris Fellow, then they use those funds for uh, uh, education and for uh, uh, the exchange student program. One of the biggest uh, wonderful programs that Rotary has done in many, many years, and it was started by the late James L. Beaumont, who was the president of Rotary International, in 1980 and 81, and it was a Polio Plus program. Polio was running rampant throughout the world, and uh, as a project, uh, Rotary slipped funds among their own membership and uh, gave millions and millions of doses of any polio vaccine throughout the world, and it is almost completely uh, eliminated. Uh, especially in the underdeveloped countries of the world. And they have uh, had projects in underdeveloped countries such as uh, uh, putting in uh, fresh water and clean water wells and filtration plants. They have uh, sent books and education materials throughout the world. Uh, I, I noticed in the latest uh, Rotary magazine there was a couple of fire trucks that uh, a couple of places in South America had no fire protection in their community at all, and uh, the Rotary Club has sent fire trucks to those places. A great humanitarian place, and, and one of the, the successes of Rotary is that the local people get to know each other. The fellowship that's enjoyed within the Rotary Club is real pleasant where businessmen exchange ideas and help each other. And I sure do thank you for watching today. This is not the end of the story because there's a whole lot more to come and we'll see you next week. Time for every family and business in Telahoma to go green and recycle. Telahoma Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Telahoma, and recycle. Hi, I'm Cindy. And I'm Jacob. 
I'm the rooster. And I'm the red mate. And we would like to welcome you to Rooster Wear. Yes, Rooster Wear is a cottage industry producing accessories for men, women, children, babies, and pets. All items are hand cut and sewn locally. Rooster Wear specializes in bow ties, pocket squares, scarves, cufflinks, neckties, and aprons of all sizes for all ages. Baby products include onesies, diaper covers, bibs, and burp pads. All bow ties, tie it yourself, or pre tied come with an adjustable neckband. All products can be made with the material of your choice as special orders are available upon request. Don't be standing back looking at fashion. Create your own with Rooster Wear. Come visit us at roosterandredmaiden.com to find our handcrafted designs for the cock of the walk. This is an American Red Cross blood donation alert. The Red Cross is experiencing a severe winter blood shortage. There is an emergency need for blood and platelet donors to give now and help save hospital patient lives. Donations are critically needed so that patients can continue to receive the life-saving treatments they need. Resolve to make a difference and help save lives by giving blood or platelets now. Use the blood donor app, visit redcrossblood.org, or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to make an appointment. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, we're back yeah. and had some interesting people. I we, love who's the, you know, the art scene is, is going on everywhere around here. With Tullahoma has really a, a nice great thing. art scene and Manchester, these, these nice ladies who were just here. And uh, it's just, They're it's creative. good. Yeah, They're it's good. Creative. It's good stuff. Yeah. Speaking some. about good stuff, there's, uh, and creative, I want you to tell us a little bit about what's happening, number one in the country and what how the country show is coming along <laughs> and when that's going to be happening and then we also need to talk about Midsummer Night Swing which is the ice cream social this week. Well the country show has been cast and all that and we're now dealing with the chaotic part of putting all the commercials together. But isn't that, isn't that the fun part too? Well part of the time. <laughs> it, somehow what amazes me every year is that it actually comes off but I have some great people, and they're all working hard. And we just started last night, and we'll work again tonight, and but see if how it, it goes. If it wasn't fun, you wouldn't keep doing it. I don't know. I think there's a bit of craziness involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all a little bit yeah. crazy. That's for but, sure. You know, I, I probably ought to be on some beach somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's a good group, and I have a lot of good help. I have uh, Melissa Sharan always helps. Of course. And, uh, uh, How can you t say crazy without saying bringing up Melissa's Lynn name? Lynn Seaborn is always helpful. And I have Jacqueline Sullinger Painter, Martha Brook Powers, and uh, Samantha Waters that is helping a lot. So, you know, I can't say that you're, I'm doing you're, it all. You're training the future, I'm aren't trying you? my best. I, I'm trying my best. Uh, once upon a time, I could do the work of 35 people, but I can't do that anymore. Only 20 now, yeah. huh? Anyway, I have a great You ought to say her. She's a machine. And, and by the way, that show comes off 11, 12, 13 of August. And this Thursday night, we have an ice cream social at South Jackson. Right. And Outside on the lawn. Bring your lawn chairs. Bring your drinks if you want to. They have box suppers, I believe. For, yes, yes. You, you need to, to call. You need to call. The tickets are $10. The gelato is provided by Legacy Creamery, and that is Cassie and Tony Grow, who used to have the place across the street from us here. And, and, and uh, who sadly lost their, their son, Eli. wonderful son, Eli. Donations will be accepted for the Eli Grow Legacy Foundation. Uh, the tickets are $10. And they can be purchased at the event or before. And box suppers are available for $8 ordered by noon 
on the 12th. And you can call South Jackson at 455-5321 uh, Yeah, and I'd like to that. mention that uh, the South Jackson Street Band, in case you don't know what that is, it's a big band. We have five saxophones, four trombones, four trumpets, and a rhythm section and two vocalists and we sing the music of big bands obviously we do modern music but it's to a big band style and uh people that love to dance it's like dance to, music it's dance music or if you just like to listen to good music while you eat your gelato that's okay too valerie lawrence we, we had on the show one day recently right and uh dennis she uh Dennis. Dennis Andrews, I was trying to say the wrong word, uh, wonderful dancers, and they're going to teach some ballroom dancing at 7 o'clock, just before we start playing. And I know they're going to concentrate on East Coast, East Coast Swing, which is fun. Mm -hmm. You know, got a good beat and all that, and maybe a waltz, they'll teach whatever that you want to learn. They will, they yeah, will be there great? to help out. Yeah, they're just volunteering their time, and I appreciate that. So you can always find something good happening at South Jackson Civic Center. Uh, they just finished up uh, with the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. They had some the, great uh, play, and, yeah. and it was a four-day run, and they had, uh, I don't remember, other than the country show, seeing as many people at a Sunday performance as there were. I went Sunday. And the place was full, that's and that usually yeah. doesn't happen um, yeah, on a Sunday good. performance of anything because there's so much going on, and particularly this time of year. And that was done by Performing Arts for Children and Teens, and right? They, they do a wonderful job. They really well, do. and uh, but it was the South Jackson Theater Series is what it what right. it is is what that whole deal is. Now that now that uh, Community Playhouse has has gone somewhere else to do their do their performing, then South Jackson has. Up, stepped up on the on the theater side of what we're doing down so there the with their own theater big series. Second production yeah. since uh, 1776. And uh, and there's a there's a slide we have up. I think it's the 15th and 16th. Oh. Uh, is the tryouts for uh, Sister Act. Sister Act. That and then next weekend is uh, Broadway, Broadway Review. Review. So there's something going on all the time. All the time. You want to be entertained? You can be entertained there. So, uh, great deal. I saw, did you have some poetry you were going to read? Well, what I want to talk about is I want to let everybody know that, that uh, my, book <coughs> is, my book has been published and printed. Right there oh. it is. That is uh, my little book of Loku, which I designed after, uh, came up with the idea after being in a Not Yet Dead Poets Society meeting where they were talking about haiku. And... Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it'll be available at uh, couches. I'm going to take them down there to $13. Uh, and I'm going to read uh, the introduction. Loku is a writing form I created after a night spent with my friends in the Not Yet Dead Poet Society. One of the members was discussing haiku, which is a form of Japanese writing that has numerous rules. As one not prone to following rules, I created Loku that night. It is a rear title, free-flowing form purposed on making a point with the last word or words being the title. Thank you to the Not Yet Deads for giving me a way to escape the exact rhythm and rhyme that has defined my writing through the years. Also, I would like to thank my wife, Fran, who has had to endure my no, new low coup at all hours of day and night. I love you, dear. I hope you find fun and some inspiration in my crazy little book of disjointed words that try to make a point. The ideas come from any and everywhere at any and every time. My first thoughts are written down other than spelling as I am the worst speller in the world little or no editing is done. What could be more fun? Enjoy low coup. I like that. I want to ask you a question about low coup. Do you just suddenly get the insp uh, inspiration and you can just spit it out? I, I don't. Like I said, I don't edit. I'll read a, I'll read a couple of things. Uh, I've read some of these. Let me, let me find something that's... And do you have a definition for low coup? I mean... I just read it. Oh, <laughs> I guess I didn't get it. <laughs> Sorry. 
a rear title collection of short related ideas that when joined together create an image which hopefully sparks the joy of imagination. That's great. And on the front, and you can't see it because it's light, uh, there is a hand right there, and that is the Dick Langford low hand wave. If you knew Dick, oh, okay. when he was driving his old cars around, he'd wave at you, he'd go that. Go and like to that. me, that is low, low cool right there. <laughs> so thank good. you, Mr. Dick, for that. Um, let's see here. I'll find a piece or two. Uh, all right, it's about what we said this morning. Number 38. Everything you do in life is about the sell. So every now and then you should look like you belong where you're trying to go. Dress right. That's good. Read that one more time. Let me let Everything you do in life is about the sale. Because I don't care whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a salesperson, a cook, whatever. So every now and then you need to look like you belong where you're trying to go. I like that. Dress right. That's something people need to think about. Words flow into the process, hooked around an idea, sprinkled with rhyme and alliteration, melody wrapped around life, a song. That's neat. You did one that I read quite often that's at my house about military or something. Right, that, right. That was really nice. I love that. Yeah, here, here's another one about sort of dressing. A wrinkle and a crease, both lines left behind just by existing. A valley or a ridge, formed by press or starch. Formed by stress or starch. Defines, one, defines one's attack on life, messed or pressed. No matter the battle you end, live to fight again. Survival teaches lessons you can't learn any other way. So don't die the first day. All right. <laughs> I, I will oh, here's that. one. <laughs> Humans and animals must have them to move. You can honky tonk or juke in them. I wish I had a big one rolled up right now. Life would be boring with no joints. Oh, yeah. All right, so All right. Low Coo, my book, John Gray at Couches, $13. Or you can call me or email me, and I'd love to get one to you. Thank you very much. You folks have a great day out there. We're out of here. We'll see you next time.